fantastic evening. We are back. Good evening to you all. We've had a summer break. It seems like a long, long summer break. And uh, we had a bit of weather with us, didn't we? But we are back on the Open Door Show, back here in September. Look, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, my name's Richie Crapson, and I'm here with the other half of Property CEO, Mr. Ian Charles. you want to say good evening, Ian? Good evening. Great to be back. Good to see you all. Good or not see you all. It is, but... isn't it? We, we've missed them, haven't we, Ian? We have. We have. Yeah, I think so. I thought I'd say it, but it's true. Give us a wave if you can see and hear us. Give us a wave. Give us a hands up. Ah, hands are going up. Thank you very much. That's all good. That's all good. I put in the chat box if you've missed us. That would be nice. You know, if you haven't missed us, <laughs> let us know as well. That would be also quite nice to know if you haven't missed us. Then we can uh, cast you aside for the rest of the show. Look, it's great to have you with us as always over the next 45 minutes. But we're going to take a deep dive as always into the world of small scale property development. Isn't that right, Ian? Certainly is, Richie. We're going to be covering... Well, some of the latest news items uh, and uh, during the course of Open Door, we'll be talking to uh, a lot of the movers and shakers out there in the world of property development who uh, we think and hope will give us a bit of an inside track as to uh, what's going on in their neck of the world, uh, in the neck of the woods in terms of property development. And we're also going to be shining a bit of a spotlight on any areas that we think might be a good opportunity for uh, for new developers to get into. So uh, quite a, look, a lot to look forward to. Uh, look forward to. That's right. Getting all tongue tied there as you've been away a while. You need to get back. Into it's practice. been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> Look, but above all, we're going to have a bit of fun doing it. That's what Open Doors about. It's about having a bit of fun. It's, it's a bit of a show in a way because we always say life is definitely far too short, but we need you to join in. So please, questions in the chat box. If there's no questions, we don't really have much of a show. So let's see uh, Let's see who's on, actually. So uh, Roma's on. Hello, Roma. Roma and co. Hopefully you're OK up there. Michael is on. Uh, let's have a look. Ramika's on. Mansour's on. Dan's on. Hello, Dan. Good evening to you. I trust you're well keeping yourself busy. Uh, hopefully you're keeping busy anyway. I hate to think of you <laughs> slacking and not doing anything. Uh, Mark's on, Solomon's on, Raymond's on, Sue's on, <gasps> Carrie's on, Zoe's on. Hello, Zoe. Good evening to you. Trust your well. Amit's on, Peter's on, Giovanni's on, Charlotte's on. I could go on. I could read all the names out, but I'm just not going to. And who says what in the chat box? Mark says, good evening, gents. Hope you enjoyed your time away. We did, actually. Yeah, yeah. to be honest, Mark, we did. Nice. Did you? It's good, wasn't it? It was very good. Yeah, not long enough, but there we go. Never. Never long enough. But, you know, we missed you guys. We missed you. Uh, Dan says, good evening, gents, and a welcome back. Zoe says, only saw a couple of your shows previously, but I've been pining for you over the summer. Zoe, thank you very much. Pining for you as well, my friend. Pining for you as well. And Kerry says, uh, great to have you back. Been a bit of a lull in the summer. Looking forward to the next season of Open Door. And lots of other people saying, great to have you back, says Jacob. Good to see you again, says Debbie. Charlotte says, looking forward to this evening. Wow. No, no pressure. It? Bit of love. I think it's a great bit of love. We give out a bit of love. A bit of love comes back. We're certainly looking forward to that. Right. So, Ian, um, what's going to be happening uh, on tonight's show? What's it all going to be about? Uh, well, I'm going to be taking it easy, as usual, and uh, letting you do the talking, uh, because you're going to be sharing your vast knowledge on the subject of uh, the PD rights, known as Class G, although apparently... Okay. Class G is now known as, uh, we've been promoted. It's now Super Class G, I gather. Ah. We'll be hearing all about that. Good stuff. Well, look, let's do some news items here. And if you've got a few news items, I'm going to chat around Class G. So I better Google some of that quickly. Give me a few minutes, Ian. If you can see if you can go do some news items, it gives me a little bit of time. I'll talk to you, guys. Okay, first one I've got here from Property Week. Uh, and this uh, with, a, with a picture of uh, Mr. Jenrick. Housing Minister, basically saying that the uh, he's not going to scrap the annual 300,000 home, new home target. This is a target that's been set for, uh, well, forever, and um, we've never ever hit it, I don't think. Well, we haven't hit it for a very long time, uh, but he's not scrapping it. He stands by it. Interestingly, last year, he says, uh, we built over 240,000 new homes. Um, which he says is more homes than in any other year since he was in primary school. There you go. So, um, yeah, it's all happening. Uh, and he's promised that um, uh, he uh, is going to be uh, making sure that government plays its role in ensuring the planning system is as simple and easily understandable and navigable as possible. Now, there's a word for the day. 
Uh, so we all, with, I think the planning system, you know, the changes are in the mix uh, and lots of uh, dialogue going on on that. But uh, yeah, he's sticking to the 300,000 a year uh, plan. I've got one here from uh, from planning resource. And uh, it, it's, it struck me, it's kind of relevant because it's uh, a lot of the local councils have got to put in their new housing plans. Um, and one in, in, in Surrey has basically kind of had a 50% reduction in the amount of green belt land that they were going to release for their for their, their town plan. Uh, and they've always also reduced the housing target by about a fifth. But what I thought was quite interesting about that is that basically said that there's now going to be a significant focus and increase on brownfield land to be allocated for housing. So uh, obviously, yeah, the, uh, the 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 population are up in arms about green belt development, not um, you know quite understandably, and so the focus is going to be on brownfield, and of course that's going to include uh, lots of uh, PD rights and conversion opportunities. And then the final piece of news: How am I doing, Rich? Have you got your Class G Google all sorted out? I haven't. I you know I forgot about that, so um, I was listening to the news. So I'll I'll have to just I'll have to just see if I can make something up. Yeah. Um, so this one is from the uh, the Daily Mail. And I, I thought this was quite interesting. So this um, this this can be the light news topic. Uh, this is where uh, a, a planning, uh, I think it was Swale Council in Kent, they accidentally uh, rejected and approved five uh, planning applications. So they were testing some new software for their planning system. They gave it to uh, uh, Johnny, the office junior. Uh, he doesn't actually say it's called Johnny but uh, just said just go and test that and see if it works and so johnny uh, basically uh, accepted uh, and uh, and uh, rejected five different applications thinking that he was doing it in sort of a practice environment but actually did it for real uh, but not not um, not just pressing the button he actually put in some um, some great comments as well um, to uh, to kind of uh, because he obviously thought that nobody was going to uh, to, to to read it. There was one in particular for uh, I think it was demol uh, demolition of a pub, and uh, he granted that permission. I did little Johnny, uh, but there were some caveats. Uh, number one, complete the works within three years, and number two, incy wincy spider. So there you go. Um, it just goes to show that um, yeah, these things can happen. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately for the council, all of those are legally binding. Their lawyers have told them, yep, unfortunately, you've got to stand by Incy Wincy Spider. So uh, they are all going to uh, to have to uh, have the decision reversed in court. So a few eggs on faces in Kent by the sound of things. There we go. Love it. I love it. That's great stuff. Shall I talk about Class G then? Go on then. Before I talk about Class G, I think it's interesting just to pick up on the... Um, the news items there that Ian was talking about, and and the one thing that I talk about a, a, a lot is this um, this requirement for housing in this country. You know, three hundred thousand, and Generic saying, well, two hundred and forty, which you know is is the most we've ever produced since he's been in primary school. I think you said Ian, wasn't it? Yeah, he looks quite young, so it might not have been that long ago. But let's assume it's a, it's probably ten, twenty years at least. I would think. Um, I don't know. I don't know how, how old you have to be to be uh, to be in a ministerial position. But anyway, the point is, do you let me ask you this question? Do you know of any other business out there? OK, any other business sector? And I know a lot of you probably come from other business sectors. Some of you, you know, watching the show tonight might be in other business sectors and maybe looking over the fence thinking, do I want to get into property development? Is that something for me? We well, just think about it. How many other businesses do you know? Do you know of any other business? that has a marketplace that is there waiting. You know, if you went to open a restaurant now, you've got to encourage your customers and you've got to find customers and you're competing with, with often an oversupply of restaurants. You know, okay, you think, look at Amazon. Well, Amazon are trying to pinch market space off of other retailers. They're not really creating any more retail space. Maybe they're encouraging us to buy stuff because it's a quick click of the button. And I have to confess, I've done that once or twice when I didn't really want something, but it was really simple. So I bought it. Um, but anyway, you know, that's what you do with cars, isn't it? But uh, aside from that, uh, you know, I think you know, it's just they're just taking the same marketplace. But but here we are falling massively behind, you know, 60,000 at best, probably 100,000 in most other years. So that means if you put it really simple, you build it, you can sell it. 
you build it, you can sell it. I always talk about this point of put building in the need market, not the one market story for another day, because I need to get onto class G in a minute. But I think this is massively important. Don't underestimate this, that if you're in this, you know, and, and I know, you know, there's a whole list of people on tonight. I'm just scanning up and down this. And quite a few of you I know are students, students of ours. So welcome, welcome. To, and, you know, if you want confidence that you've made that decision or those of you that aren't students of ours and maybe thinking about getting into this, if you want a bit of a bit of push to say, do I do this? You you build it once you know how to develop, you know how to stack your numbers up, you know about permitted development rights. We're going to do that in a minute. Then you can deliver a product which people are going to buy because there's such a shortage. That's massive. That's massive. I'm almost I could talk about that for ages, but I better not. Let's talk about Class G. Now, Ian, that's your fault because you gave me a news item. <laughs> Blame the other guy. <laughs> that's what you're going to do. You're right, on, Class G. Ian said it's called Super G. OK, Super G. Um, I don't know. Let's, it's just Class G, but it is it is a bit super in terms of what it's doing. And it has been revised uh, the 1st of August 2021. Now, Class G, and, and this is important. This is a permitted development class, not a use class. And, and for those that are dipping their toe in the world of property tonight, maybe some of you for the first time. Give me a hands up. Give me a wave if this is your first time ever on the Open Door Show. Yeah, a good few people tonight. Well, welcome. Welcome. That's cool. That's good. And it might be for some of you, this might be your first dipping your toe in the water of property. So don't overthink about, you know, we've got letters and references and all sorts of things. So Class G is a permitted development right. And previously, we had the right to go and convert primarily shops. OK, a couple of other caveats, but just think about it in simple terms. It was shops. We could take a shop and over the top of the shop, we could build a couple of flats. That was it. In a, in a nutshell, that was it. We could build two flats. Um, lots of other advantages of it at that time previously, that time being before the revisions, we didn't have to fill out any application forms. That's a result. That definitely was a result. But um, that was simple, straightforward. And as a permitted development right, it is a right to go and do something. And what you mustn't underestimate is the power of permitted development rights, because it gives you the ability to get the funding. OK, and it's one less thing you haven't got to worry about. You're not in the control of the planners. So what happened to Class G? Well, no one quite knew what was going to happen. OK, no one quite knew what was going to happen. But we ended up in a position where we've actually had the announcement. And there's a whole list of buildings that now come under Class G. It was just shops. Get this. Write this down if you want. OK, it's going to be fairly quick. So grab a pen because I'm going to mention it. It's, it's still shops, but it's also financial and professional services, banks to you and I. It's cafes and restaurants. It's offices. It's light industrial, interesting that one. Uh, clinics, health centers, day nurseries, and gyms, and I think indoor recreational centers, they call it. It's a whole list. It's a big long list. It's a it's a massive extension of the list. So now, you know, with the, and that sector, that, that sector is called use class E. Try not to confuse you too much this evening. It's called commercial business and service sector. So pretty much any building, and there's a whole range of buildings there you can take under class G under permitted development right and put two flats above nice and straightforward what's the changes from the old one apart from this extensive list of properties that you can now convert one change unfortunately is you've got to fill out a few forms it's now under prior notification you've got to fill out some forms that's not really any big deal you know get your planning consultant to fill those out for you he or she can do that no problems at all and they are obliged the council to give you a response in 56 days so you're on this. OK, it's not like you've got to sit there on a planning permission where it's three or four months and you still don't know whether you're going to get it. Then they can throw all sorts of policies at you and so on. 56 days, you should have a response. Then you can get on with it. You can get on with your scheme. So it, that's that's a change. OK, OK, but it's not a big change. That's not a problem. Now, in terms of uh, other bits and pieces around it that's changed, the only other one really that's changed is you now have to work out where you're going to put the bins. OK, where are the wheelie bins going to go now? I think that's a good one. OK, because uh, if you don't have a space for the wheelie bin, they're going to be all over the pavements and the uh, you know people can't get by prams, push chairs, you know, electric scooters for, for, you know, impaired people. Yeah, it's a problem. So you've got to now just decide where the waste is going to go. 
that's not a big problem. You still have to get natural light into all habitable rooms, uh, as it is with all PD rights. You've got to comply with national space standards. You've got to make sure that no other noise is going to impact people. You've got to make sure there's no contamination issues, and you've got to make sure that flooding is carried off. So that's G. In a nutshell, that's it. You can still do it in listed buildings. It is the only permitted development right that you can take a listed building, a grade two listed building, and you have a right, I and mean, it's amazing that you can do this, you have a right to put two flats above. Simple as that. Now, there are a few other little, twer uh, uh, little, little tweaks and bits and pieces around it. And without getting into those into detail this evening, because I want to get some, uh, some questions. I see questions are coming in, so I want to get to questions in a minute. Is if you're interested in HMOs, I don't know if you folks out there are interested in HMOs, there is a little quirk, there is a little uh, loophole, I guess you could say, it, that actually Class G is probably the only permitted development right that lets you convert something into residential and you have a route potentially to turn that into an HMO. Okay. Now, one thing we said we'd do tonight is we'd compare Class G to Class MA because some people say, well, what's the difference? Because Class MA, covers all of those buildings, the shops, the banks, the cafes, the restaurants, the office, lights, etc. et cetera. Well, it does. But class MA, okay. Well, first of all, class MA, you can't do in listed buildings. So you might want to use class G. Uh, class MA, okay, has a couple of other restrictions on it. It has to have been in its use class as a bank, as a shop or whatever, for at least two years. Class G doesn't. So actually, if you've had something that was only changed recently, to a shop, well, you can use Class G, but you can't use Class MA. Class MA, the building has to be vacant for three months before you put an application in. Class G, it doesn't. You can put it in whilst it's occupied. That could be an advantage. Class MA has a restriction of up to 1,500 square meters. Now, that's pretty big. That's about 30 odd flats. And if you're thinking about getting into small scale development, that will certainly cover you off. But get this Class G has no restrictions. You can build as many flats as you want. As long as you've got enough shops or units below, you can build as many as you want. Because you might go, hang on a minute, I've only got one shop. So that means if I want to build 30 flats, I've got to have 15 shops. Yeah, absolutely. But there are there are tricks. There are tips and tricks, okay, that I could spend probably two or three hours going through this evening of how you actually start making extra shops, which you don't have to get permission for, or extra banks or extra restaurants. OK, how you make extra units to get more units over the top. There is also a way on Class G, and most people don't know this. There is also a way on Class G how you can actually convert the ground floor. OK, a little bit of a loophole. OK, but you can actually convert the ground floor. Although it says two flats over, most people think, oh, it's just the first floor and above. No, no, it's not. You can also convert the ground floor. Ish. OK, there's a little tip and trick around that. So it's extremely powerful, extremely powerful. And they say it's different to MA. And so where you've got instances where MA doesn't work for you, for one of those restrictions, whichever one it might be, well, then think about going across to Class G. Actually, you can combine them, what we call daisy chaining. You can link twos together. So it's extremely powerful. Now, the interesting thing, and some people have asked me, well, how come Class G has these, and I'm going to call them loopholes, and MA doesn't? You know, why does MA not have them? This is, this is probably the answer, although one is not certain, because I don't, I don't live in Whitehall, never been to Whitehall, actually, never been into a government department and assisted them in the drafting of their permitted development rights. But MA was a new right that was drafted from new, and it's probably coordinated and structured properly and thought out. Class G, they've had a little tinker with. You've had a little play around. So maybe that same junior, Johnny, that was in the planning department, whatever council that Ian mentioned, actually was drafting the amendments to Part G. And they went, yeah, that's great. Get it out the door. Let's send it out. We need to get it out on the 1st of August. Not realizing, actually, there's some loopholes in this. And it'll probably take them about three, four, maybe five years to come back and readdress this. And are they bothered? If you think about it, the government have put these in because they want to encourage you to get into development and start plugging some of that shortfall on the 300,000 houses that we need. Are they worried there's a few loopholes? No, nah, they're probably not. So Class G, extremely powerful. When MA doesn't work, 
when you want to build more than 1500 square meters, when you don't have vacancy for three months, when you haven't had the use class for two years, when it perhaps is a listed building, then you can use class G. Super use class G, as Ian referred to, and I think it probably is. How about that? Was that a good overview? Oh, that was a fantastic overview. I particularly liked the um, the bit, but out of interest, you're quite a fast writer, personally. Why? Well, when you said, grab a pen, write this down, and proceeded to get a list of all the things that were covered, I got as far as writing down shops. <laughs> well, there's, there's, it encourages you to listen to the Not replay, great. doesn't it, when you can slow us down? Yep, I'm kicking myself now. Yeah, you've got to be fast on these things. You've got to be fast. You know, there's no time for, for slackers. Shall we do some questions? Let's see some questions. Great stuff. First little comment I notice in the chat box in there from Harvey. Harvey says, wow, great. Thanks for the overview on Class G. Really, really helpful. Good. No problems at all. So let's pick up a question. So Dave says, good evening, Dave. Good evening to you. Uh, so am I right in understanding that you can now convert any uppers on all the uses you mentioned, yeah, which you didn't write down, <laughs> into Resi under the new Class G. Yes, you are. You are right, Dave. You are absolutely right. And because Ian was criticizing me, and he does it quite a lot, and I'm a sensitive soul, I will read out that list again for you, okay? Shops, banks, cafes or restaurants, offices, light industrial, clinics, health centers, day nurseries, gyms, and indoor recreational centers. Dave, you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. You can convert all of those. OK, do another one. One for you, Ian. I've got a question for you. Let's see if I can choose a question for you. Okay. What about this? I've got a few others on, on Class G. I'll ask the technical one answer on, on Class G because I've just I've just I've just given you a load of spiel. So uh, let me put this one up. Ian, here's a question from Robert. Robert wants to ask a question. He says, Ian, he doesn't say that, but I've added that in. How should I work out my GDV values with confidence so I can get funding now the market is so uncertain? Robert, interesting question. Good question. Yes. Well, uh, good evening, Robert. Uh, basically, you want to be uh, talking to agents. That's where you're going to be getting uh, uh, yeah, th those uh, guys and girls have got their their kind of uh, ear to the ground. I think the thing you've got to bear in mind is that what when you're if you're at the stage at the moment where you're just starting out, then in terms of when your project actually comes to the market, you know, it's going to be what 18 months, 24 months down the line, and for sure the market is going to have moved on by then. You know. And of course, we haven't got a crystal ball. We don't know exactly what is going to be in that. Uh, the situation is going to be then. But certainly when we look at a lot of the predictions and projections in the media that are coming out of uh, the industry, there's there's quite a few positive signs and and some confidence that house prices are going to uh, have, have settled down uh, in 2022 and then beyond. Uh, obviously, it's watch this space. But I think what you want to be doing is to Bear in mind that you are looking out into a protracted period. Uh, so we have got this, this demand, uh, almost insatiable demand for new homes. So that demand is always going to be there. Uh, certainly I'd take a look at what's being reported in the media in terms of um, house prices and the like and the market generally. But I think also make sure that you've got those relationships with uh, with agents. So you're getting, um, yeah, you're getting uh, their story from what's actually happening day in, day out on the coalface. There you go, Robert, I hope that helps. Okay, uh, Harvey, who said uh, he's, he's enjoyed it so far, he's put a question in. What about other PD classes, uh, class M, which can be used for shop conversions? What's happening to that? Ah, okay, class M, interesting one. I know it's gonna get confusing because we've got MA, now we've got M. There was a class M, but there still is a class M actually. There is a permitted development right called class M. And it was uh, retail to residential up to 150 square meters on the ground floor, but not in the well, restrictions within conservation areas and so on. But simple is 150 square meters and you could take the retail on the ground floor. Now, basically, uh, M in terms of the retail conversion has been replaced by MA. OK, uh, the government didn't think they would use MA because it matched M. I can absolutely tell you that's for certain. So they used MA uh, uh, as a reference. That now picks up all that list that I said earlier, and of course shops are in there. So that sort of superseded the use of M. I'm pretty certain though, Harvey, and, and uh, but just check this, okay, check this with your planning consultant. M, M does now still exist, and I think it exists to cover um, just a, a very odd little group of, of buildings. And I think it is betting offices, payday loan shops, and laundrettes, 
Okay, so you can take a laundrette or a betting shop or a payday loan shop if you can find one for sale at a reasonable rate and convert up to 150 square meters into residential under permitted development right class M. So class M is still out there um, and it has that ability to be converted, but the retail element is effectively being superseded. Hopefully that has answered your question. And as well, what I can say is, well, there are other PD rights, okay? There's ZA, there's AA, and there's AB, there's AC, there's AD, there's Q. <laughs> there are quite a few others out there. We're just talking about class G this evening. And I should say, actually, just as a point of interest, if anyone wants to listen, not only to obviously a rerun of Open Door this evening, which will be up uh, by next week, pop onto our YouTube channel. And actually there's a little, we, we, we call it some little snippet videos. There is actually a little video on there on class G. So I did a little update on Class G. Pop onto that tonight or tomorrow if you're a little bit bored or you want a little bit more information and listen to what I had to say then about Class G. I think it should be the same, but it's worth checking. Okay, uh, let me pick this one up from Zoe. Zoe said, because this one should be quite quick reading the question here, can I add extra floors under the PD Class G? No, Zoe, you cannot add extra floors under PD Class G. You'd have to use ZA um, ah. to demolish and rebuild or AA to put extra floors on. OK, now, I mean, the way you're not adding under ZA, ZA extra floors, but you can take a building that has various buildings that, that comply. And I'm not going to go into ZA tonight because that's a whole nother webinar and, and show and so on. But you can take ZA demolish and rebuild, in which case you get extra floors or AA, AB, AC, AD, et cetera. They are putting extra floors on buildings, but no class G you can't. But ZA and AAs and ABs and ACs, you can. Next question. Okay, we've got one here from uh, Stephen. Uh, Stephen asks, I'm a potential new developer and have always thought I might like to build new houses, but do you think I'd be better to think about using uh, permitted development rights and do conversions? Okay, welcome, Stephen. Uh, well, absolutely nothing wrong with, uh, with building houses and, and doing new builds. So we kind of divide the world pretty much into stuff that you're building from scratch you know digging foundations and building houses or whatever and then conversions where we're typically taking yeah, existing buildings and converting them into typically flats and apartments although it could be uh, almost anything else uh, i think the thing to bear in mind when it comes to to new build uh, the first thing is that you, these pd rights that we've been talking about you know there is a massive advantage in using pd rights and typically these apply pre predominantly where the biggest opportunity is is in um, the conversion space so i would say particularly for your first development if it is your first development then i would be looking in the kind of pd direction because it just your first development is going to be uh, in many respects your toughest because you're doing it for your first time you know your team is new um, and won't have worked with you before or together before necessarily you're getting finance commercial lending and so on uh, and, and so on for the first time so there's lots of things that are kind of meshing together for the first time so why not make that first deal as simple as possible and as richie kind of alluded to earlier planning risk uh, if you've got to get planning permission for stuff it can drag on uh, it is not a great system um, uh, by any stretch of imagination and you want to try and remove that risk if you can so pd rights i think are going to give you that advantage i think the other thing that i'd say about new builds is that you're going into the ground and whilst that kind of looks like you've got no constraints because you're building kind of something from scratch uh, the problem is you don't know what's under the ground so you've, you've certainly got an advantage when you get the foundations in the problem can come when you're building the foundations because you can't see what's there you buy the site and then uh, you might find that when you're digging those foundations that you could uncover all sorts of horrors uh, you might need you know more extensive footings you might encounter some um, sort of supply pipes utility cables pipes or whatever or a well or all sorts of horrors so one of the advantages of conversions is you don't generally need to go into the ground so you're just converting what's there and you can uh, you can see it but absolutely wouldn't rule out new build and perhaps something to do uh, after you've got your first one under your belt there you go Stephen hope that helps Richie you're good I've got a question. Well, I haven't got a question. I have I have four questions here um, uh, from Mansell. Now, Indeed. actually, this is a question that got submitted uh, uh, prior to the show, so I better pick this one up. And by the way, you're always welcome to do that. If you want to put questions in once you've seen what the show is about and it's announced, pop your questions in um, to the team and we can pick them up. They sent this one through to me. So let's have a look. He says, what uh, what should be the minimum value of a one-bedroom flat in the area 
where the flats uh, are selling for 70,000. And because it's, I think he's saying, because it's around 70,000 for the conversion, how does that work? I think that's his first question. I'm just trying to read that, understand that, Mansell. What would be the minimum value of a one bedroom flat in the area? Trying to understand what that question is in terms of, you know, flats, if your flats are only selling at a certain value, uh, the way I'm trying to answer that is you want 20% profit. OK, so you were looking, we teach our students to have 20% profit on gross development value. So if your flats are selling for around £70,000, then you want to take 20% off of that to get your total costs. And total costs will include, obviously, your purchase of the building that you're going to convert. It will include all of your conversion construction costs, all of your fees, all of your finance costs. So that's going to break it down in terms of you know, the, the, the actual purchase price. So in terms of, you know, minimum values and, and things, it, it's going to be driven by the marketplace. Your marketplace in wherever you are, whatever you're trying to deliver geographically across the country will determine what the maximum value of your one bedroom flat would be. You've then, and if, if this is a question you're asking, you've got to break that down 20% off and then take off all your costs. Hopefully that answers that question. I'm, just, I'm trying to understand what the question was. The second question here, uh, it talks about minimum floor plates of the storage space above the shop so that 37 square meter flats, two of them can be built after provision of the new wall thickness is due to insulation, etc. I think the question there is how much floor plate do you need above a shop? OK, if you want to build two flats, 37 square meters. So if we take 37 square meters, multiply it by two, we've got 74 square meters of internal area that we need for the flats. Now, what we would often say is, you know, and you're saying, what about thickness of walls and so on? It is, one would often say 20% for circulation. So take the floor area of the existing building, take off 20% and then, uh, you know, work out that you've still got your 74 square meters left. Now, quite often, that, and that's not a, a rule that you can apply all the time, particularly if you're just doing two flats above a shop because 20% might be too much mental. It might be that actually both flats can have a direct access. Sometimes you might see that there's external staircases in place and there's no loss of circulation. So all you need is a 74 less the thickness of walls. And when we talk about thickness of walls, it depends what you've got. If you've got a cavity wall construction, which could be insulated already, well, you don't need to reduce any thickness. Maybe the only thickness you're gonna have to do is the party wall between the two flats. But of course, you may not even need to do that because you might have two floors mansor and one of those flats goes on the first floor. One goes on the second. So there's no loss of area. OK, so it, it, it does depend. There's no straightforward answer on that. But hopefully and I'm not really answering any of your questions straightforwardly, but I'm trying to give you some information to make sure you can under, understand it. So think about has it got cavity walls? Is it got insulation? Is it up on the additional floors and so on? If you're building a number of flats, 20 percent circulation. For all those other bits, it's not a bad rule. Um, and then the last question here, um, oh, actually three was to do with the one above. Uh, so next question here, and the last one, I go through several online portals. Any particular portal known to advertise shops and uppers? Now, I think I think in terms of portals, Rightmove and Zoopla are gonna probably have the majority of those on. You can uh, go to the various um, gazettes that sell businesses, okay? There are a number of those out there, just type in businesses for sale. And you might find that you can buy a business and actually all you want is the premises. So you've got to shut the business down. Complications to that. If you've never done that in your life before, be very careful because you could have staff. that You've got to be across and all sorts of other uh, um, uh, um, responsibilities that you take on. The key, the key is uh, trying to find actually relationships with agents. So it's actually getting in a position, Mansour, where agents will come to you. You build a relationship when you will get exclusivity, you will get first call on a deal. That's the best way. By the time a lot of stuff goes onto the portal, many other people have seen it. Or search for your own off-market deals. Now, you might say, well, how do I build relationships with agents if I've never done this before, if I'm, if I'm relatively new? How are they going to give me credibility? How are they going to take me serious? You might also say, how do I find off-market deals? How do you do that? And I'm going to say, and, and, and I know you might say, well, I would say that, wouldn't I? That is actually what we teach our students. We teach our students exactly that. Um, and that's the process you've got to understand to go through. It's not something I could quickly say in the next couple of minutes. So, but yeah, that's the way you want to go forward to try and understand that.
Okay, that's all. Hopefully that's good. Ian, over to you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, got one here from Sarah. Uh, evening, Sarah. Sarah asks, uh, do using permitted development rights help or hinder me getting funded for a project? Uh, well, Sarah, you're only going to get funding from uh, from commercial lenders if you've got planning permission in place already. So if we think about this, what we're going to do in terms of getting funding, we've got various different sources that we're going to get funding from. And um, you've got uh, private investment and commercial lending. Typically, your, uh, your commercial lender, yeah, not going to be able to advance you any money unless the project in question has got planning permission already signed off, already um, accepted, or permitted development rights in place, um, so you're ready to go. So answer the question, they absolutely do help. Um, I think it's what you then need to bear in mind, of course, is that if you've got an opportunity that doesn't have PD rights or planning permission in place, it's still doable, it's still possible, uh, but there's obviously gonna be a period until potentially you've got those in place. And during that period, all of the funding is going to have to come from a different source. So that could be your own money. It could be that you're getting your private investors to contribute to that. Or it may be that you've got some sort of uh, bridging finance in place to be able to do that. And then ultimately, when you get to the point that you've got um, you know, the, the planning permission or the PD rights uh, all sorted out, then uh, your commercial lender will be able to come to the party. Uh, I would say yeah it's almost always safer to go down the first route which is making sure that you've got that pd um or, or planning in place because then your commercial lender is involved from day one uh, and that's probably a good thing there you go sarah i hope that helps you're back yeah good, good stuff i was back did you panic then did you think i'd gone no i think there was a there, i saw so the attendance um the engagement levels went through the roof i was trying to work out what it was and i realized you weren't there well, I, I tell you what happened, and 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 you know, you often think because these things are live, and, and you guys all watching this, we're in our studio, we've got lots of screens all going on, and as as I'm chatting away, a, a warning comes up on my screen that actually it's about to power off one of my systems, and uh, I thought that's a bit odd. I wonder what that is. So um, literally, I turned my camera off, and I had to go round behind the screen, so you do, I don't want to see me walking off and back on again. And actually, a, a socket had come loose. So actually, one of the systems was going to power it down. I had 11 minutes left. And I thought, I might better do the end of the show, but I'm not going to risk that. I'm not going to risk that. This live, this happens. Show must you go had on. A, you had a socket loose. Well, I had a socket you. loose. Okay. Uh, Mansour says, thank you, Richie. You've answered all of my questions. Uh, Robert says, thank you. Great advice when we answered his earlier. Stephen said, terrific. That's what she was there. So that was it. And Zoe said that she was asking about the extra flaws on the, under PD Class G. Uh, th thanks for that. I didn't think you could. Um, I now understand Class G. You're a star. Uh, that's me, Ian, by the way. I'm a star. That's what she said. So uh, that's quite nice, isn't it? That's quite nice for someone to say that. OK, next question. Um, uh, Harjinder, so, so I'm reading it out. I should read it out aloud, shouldn't I? Harjinder says, mm -hmm. you have said before that you can demolish buildings and build new without planning permission. How does this work? Is this any building? Surely not. Uh, no, it's not any building. And yes, I did say that before. Um, and it's called Class ZA. So without getting into too much detail tonight, you can take certain buildings under Class ZA and you can demolish and rebuild them. OK, so, you know, there, and there's a few. Basically, it falls into, into into sort of B1 buildings, which are offices. And there's also B1C light industrial. So you can take buildings in in the certain sector you know that, that, that's covered by za you can demolish them and you can build new residential blocks in their place that is definitely true hajinda you can do that it's not any building okay so it's restricted to some uses um in terms of how it works it's a permitted development right it's a prior notification you've got to tick some boxes there are complications with it. It's not as straightforward as GNMA. If, Hajin, if you want to be, I know you're not one of our students, um, and, and I know that, recognize most of our students' names, not all, but I recognize most. And what I say is if you're thinking about getting into development, thing, it's not the easiest, Hajinda. okay? MA and G are the most simplest routes you want. If you want what, what I call always the path of least resistance, which you do, don't you? I'm sure you do. That's You want to go the simplest route. And I want you to do the simplest route. I want you to have the least risk if you're going to get into development. G and MA. Don't bother with ZA for your first development. But yes, I did say that, Harjinder, you can definitely do it. Ian, what have we got next? 
Um, we've got one here from Adir. Uh, good evening, Adir. Adir asks, what is an Article 4 area and does it apply to the new Class G? Okay, good question. Well, Article 4 uh, doesn't apply specifically to, uh, to Class G. So what is an Article 4 area? Basically, it's where uh, it, it's a tool that the local councils can use to basically uh, enforce the requirement for planning permission. So uh, we've got all these permitted development rights uh, and we've got opportunities to uh, to convert things. But when an Article 4 uh, direction is in place, then it means uh, that it covers that particular area for that particular conversion or that particular uh, activity then it means that the, we still have to go for, for planning permission. It's something that a lot of councils have done with uh, things like HMOs, so where they've got student populations, for example, uh, and local communities, a lot of the housing is being bought up and converted into student HMOs, then yeah, the council, uh, normally lobbied by the locals, has uh, you know can put in place these Article 4 directions, means that you can't do it anymore. Now, what happened when Class MA came in, uh, they made it clear that any existing Article 4 directions that were in place would continue in force for uh, for 12 months. Uh, so they will still apply. Uh, but after that time, the council will need to uh, to reapply for, for Article 4. So I suspect that that will therefore apply and exactly the same rule will apply to Class G. But what I would say is talk to your planning consultant uh, about the specific area that you're looking at because uh, they they will be absolutely up to speed on the article situation in your in your area um, but it's uh, I think going forward it's going to become increasingly more difficult for councils to uh, to get article 4 uh, directions through uh, certainly some of the stuff I picked up in the media would indicate that that's going to be it's it's not something that government is is keen on um, councils using it as a means of uh, simply resting back power so that they've got control over over planning decisions because of course that is simply going to be going back to the, the the bad old days where everything gets stuck in planning and it takes ages to get new houses built so i think we could see some uh, constraints around article fours going forward uh, but for now the ones that are in force at the moment uh, from whenever they announced uh, class ma yeah i would expect those to be in force for 12 months and the, the council will have to reapply but talk to your planning consultant idea i hope that helps good stuff Jamie says, and this is uh, this is Jamie W, because there is a, a Jamie S on as well, two, two Jamie. So Jamie W says, really? you said there is no limit to areas you can convert, but you said that you can only build two flats. How does that work then? I think I was trying to allude to that earlier, and without trying to explain it all this evening, I probably have to start doing it with some diagrams, okay? Um, and actually, if you want me to explain that, I'll tell you how, how you, you can come and spend some time with us, and I'll, I'll teach you how to do that. But it's about Look, in terms of if we've got a shop below or we've got a bank, or we've got a restaurant, if we've only got one restaurant, we can only have two flats. But if we had two restaurants, we could have four flats. And if we had three restaurants, we could have six flats and so on. OK, now, the, the simple thing, Jamie, is that actually if you want to turn one restaurant into two or one restaurant into three, you can. And there's no restrictions. So if I want to take one restaurant, turn it into three restaurants, and you might go, why do you want to do that for? Because I want to get six flats. And so that's the way you can do it. It's it's a it it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tip and trick. I wouldn't say this one's a loophole. This is just how it works. Okay. But a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people just take that basic one unit, two flats, one unit, two flats. No, split the units. So I'm not going to try and I'd have to try and show you some diagrams, but that just take on board, uh, Jamie. Yes, that's how you do it. Ian, if you've got another quick one, let's see if we can get one more, one or two quick ones in before we uh, before we wrap up this evening. Okay, uh, this is quite quick. I think it's from Lucas. Uh, good evening, Lucas. Uh, is there a good way to find off-market deals, or is it better to get deals from the portals? I'm just starting about. Uh, I'm just starting to think about getting into development from being buy to let landlord. Was wondering the best approach. But it kind of links back to one of the comments that uh, Richie made earlier, which is that uh, kind of the portals. There's some great places. There's some great opportunities on the portals, but of course those are the deals that everybody can see. And you tend to get the, the advantage that you have there is when you know how to uh, to make more from that particular opportunity 
uh, than the other people that are looking at it. And um, you know, that links very neatly into things like permitted development. And as Richie mentioned earlier, daisy chaining permitted development rights together so that you've got an angle that enables you to pay, pay more for the building than anybody else. And of course, that gives you the best chance of, uh, of winning the deal. That's the stuff that's on the portals. So we're talking Right Move, Zoopla, Estates Gazette, and the the your local commercial agents' websites. Um, where you want to be though is is effectively going off market, um, and the two places of doing that. One is going to direct a vendor. That's probably the hard yards. The easier route is to have great relationships with agents because when agents get deals coming onto their books, then they want a quick turnaround. They want to sell it with as little fuss or time and expense as possible. And the best way for them to do that is to ring around the people that they know, their hot buyers list, as they call them, and try and find, try and get a deal done with one of those hot buyers. If you're on that list, then you're gonna get first dibs. If that list doesn't work for the uh, the agent, nobody buys it, then what happens? It goes onto the portals. So if you're only looking at the portals, you're gonna be looking at the, um, yeah, the stuff that didn't get sold before it got there. Uh, what you really want to be doing is getting some really good relationships in place with uh, with some agents so that you're able to get those kind of first dibs. When something comes up that matches what you're looking for, you get a, a call directly from the agent and you can do a quick viewing and get in there uh, before it goes out onto the uh, the open market. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Just pick up, let me pick up a very couple of quick things here. Um, we talked about Article 4 earlier, which was a dear's question. And Mansell says, I think Article 4 has been extended to B1 office conversion only, not on any other class. No, not necessarily true. Uh, people either get confused with Article 4. Article 4s can be put on anything. It's just a process. So they could be put on a bank in a, banking in certain areas. They could be put on certain zones. They, they can be put on Class MA. They could be put on Class G. So no, it's not just offices, okay? A lot of people think they're just HMOs as well. So no, they can be put onto anything. And I'm gonna try and answer these last two ones very quickly, because Gary says, what if you don't have room for the bins? Because I mentioned you've got to actually store the bins somewhere. What then? You said that you needed to have a solution to get approval. Yes, you do, Gary. Put the bins somewhere. Maybe you've got to take a bit of the space internally to put the bins. Maybe you've got to find a bit of garden space. Maybe you've got to pinch a bit of the shop space to make the shop smaller. There are ways that we can do it because shop sizes that you've got to retain maybe on the ground floor don't have minimum space standards, which is what something you have to do for residential. They can be whatever size you want. So there's definitely a solution for bins. Probably need to do your drawing as well, Gary, but I can't do that tonight because we don't have the facilities. And finally, Pamela says, can you run through the list again of buildings that you can convert under this new class G? Pamela, I can, but get your pen because this is the last time. OK, that list of buildings and it's extensive. Shops, banks, cafes, restaurants, offices, light industrial. Remember that one? Clinics, health centers, day nurseries, gyms and indoor recreational centers. There we go. Hopefully that's quite good. Good stuff. OK, we're pretty much at the end of the show. Please, just whilst we're wrapping up, just put any uh, any comments in the chat box. If you enjoyed tonight's show, let us know. That would be very much appreciated. We always like to hear a few comments from other people. That'd be great. Next week's show uh, is going to be on Thursday at seven o'clock, uh, Thursday the 16th, that is. And we have a guest next week uh, called Adam Lawrence. Adam Ooh. Lawrence is pretty big in the world of property. Uh, he runs a company called Partners in Property as well, which is uh, quite an extensive networking group across the uh, country. We speak at a, a fair few times throughout the year. Um, uh, he's a lot of knowledge, is, is Adam, about the market and the strength of the market and what's going on in the market. So come and join us next week and ask Adam any question you want about property and the market and what he thinks is going to happen. That's probably his real strength, a lot of economics and stuff. Ian, have you enjoyed tonight's show? I've loved it. Um, I thought it was quite funny that you took a break halfway through, but um, I don't know if you're going to, that's going to be a theme going forward, but uh, look I, forward to that. Keep me my, I, my, think, my... I think I might do, you know, I'm in my twilight years, so I think it's something I have to think about. So I think I might do. Good stuff. Look, Excellent. folks, if, if uh, I said that, actually, you know, there is, um, th there's things that we'd have to show you about carving up the shops and various other little tricks and the bins that Gary was asking. If anyone is interested, look, we are actually coming back out of the summer break. We have got some new training events that's coming up and, and, and some of these are free. OK, because we try and give knowledge out there so people can decide where the property is for them. If you are interested, I can't tell you exactly when they're going to be and I can't give you a link to them now. Just drop a note to the help desk, to our support team, support at propertyceo.co.uk, support at propertyceo.co.uk. 
and just say, I'm interested to know what next training event you've got coming up. We've got some coming up probably um, later this month um, and they can give you some links to them. They might be a bit sooner than that. We're just trying to get, confirm the dates and put them together. Okay. I think that's the end of the show, isn't it, Ian? It's the end of the show, show. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoyed Enjoy that. that. So good stuff. Let's have a look. Massel says, thank you, Richie. You have answered all my questions, which is great. Um, uh, Grazia says, Michael, I think he thinks he's Italian. I don't know what he's doing there. It was a uh, lovely, uh, knowledgeable. Thank you very much. Dan says, fantastic content always. Thanks, content as always. Thanks, guys. Carolyn says, brilliant show. Thoroughly enjoyed it tonight. Uh, Adir says, great. Thanks for the answers. Uh, Jamie says, brilliant show. That's Jamie W, by the way. Jamie S doesn't say anything. He could, have said, he could have said thank you as well, couldn't he? Um, uh, Harjinta says, uh, great show. Glad to have you guys back. Um, uh, Chris says, great show. Looking forward to next week. I know of Adam. He'll be a great guest. Helen says, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Tom says, welcome back. Missed you. Missed you too, Tom. Missed everyone else out there. Look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great evening. Goodbye now. Bye now. Take care.